In this video, you'll learn all about how to deal with missing values in Pandas. Let's get started. If you're new to this series, be sure to check out the other videos, which I'll link to right up here. Today, you'll learn all about how to identify missing values in Pandas and, and what to do with them. You'll learn how to fill missing values with a particular value. You'll learn how to interpolate a new value based on other values within the data set. And finally, you'll learn how to back and forward fill your missing data to create a more meaningful data set. Let's get started. Okay, let's write some code. I've already imported pandas as PD here, and I've created a new data set just for this tutorial, which I'll link to down in the description below. We're using the pandas read Excel function here to load in the data set at this URL and assigning it to a new data frame called DF. So let's see what the data frame actually looks like. We can print it out by simply typing DF. We can see here that we have a series of dates ranging from July 1st all the way through July 19th. We have a temperature column in Fahrenheit as well as a humidity column in percent. We can see here that there's a number of different values missing in each of the columns. Now let's take a look at what the data set actually has within it. We can do this using the describe function as you learned in a previous video. So what this gives us is it provides the count of the different values within each column as well as the mean and some other high level descriptive statistics. We can also use the df info method to learn more about it. What this tells us is the number of non-null characters within each column. So we can see here that the time column isn't actually missing any values as there are 19 non-null records. However, both temperature and humidity only have 16. In this case, it's quite easy to figure out how many missing values there are in each column because we know there are 19 records. But in other cases, this may not be as straightforward. An easy way, as you learned in a previous video, is to combine both the isNA function as well as the sum function. So what we can do is write df.isNA and sum. What this actually does is that the isNA function will return a Boolean array of either true or false if the value is null. It returns true if the value is null and false if the value isn't null. In Python, when you add Boolean values, a true value is assigned a value of one, meaning that for every null value in each column, one will be added. This gives us a much clearer picture of how many missing values we actually have in our data frame. One of the key things to do with missing data is to decide whether or not to keep the data or to transform it into something else, thereby working around the actual missing data. Let's first take a look at how to drop data. Pandas provides a very helpful function called the drop na function. What this will do by default is it will drop all of the missing records. So if we simply wrote df drop na, it would drop any record where there's any missing value. So for example, we can see that items of index two through four have been dropped because either a value is empty in the temperature column, the humidity column, or across both of them. Similarly, a few other items have been dropped. Now, what if you were only interested in dropping values if they were missing in a particular column, and it didn't matter if they were missing in another column? Then you can use the subset argument. So say you were only interested in dropping records where the humidity was null, and keep any where the temperature was null, but humidity wasn't, then you would be able to use the drop an a function with the subset argument. So we would write df drop an a subset equals, and then even if you're just passing in a single value, you need to include it as a list. So what we can do is write humidity as a list. Now when we run this, we can see that there are still records where only temperature is null, but any record where the humidity value was null has been dropped. Another important parameter is the how parameter. This accepts a number of different arguments that can be passed into it. The first one is all. This checks whether or not every single value in that record is null, and in that case it will drop it. So if we write df drop an a 
how equals all, we can see that no values have actually been dropped because the time record exists for each of the different records. Another version that we can write for this is the any. This will check whether or not any of the values is null and drop that record. So if we replace all here with any, we can see that this drops any record where any value is null. This works in many ways exactly as if you didn't write anything into here. An important thing to note here is that we're not actually manipulating the object right now. The drop in a function also has an in place argument. So if we actually wanted to manipulate the data frame itself, we would need to write in place equals true. Now when we run this, the data frame df will be reassigned with those records dropped. Similarly, as we've done in other tutorials, we could reassign the object by writing df equals df drop in a. And then this reassigns the object with those records dropped. Now, say you've taken a close look at your data set and you've decided you don't actually want to drop any records, but you want to work with the missing data to be able to impute or fill them with different values within the data set. Then you can use the fill in a function. By default, the fill in a function can accept any scalar or any value that you want to fill missing values with. So for example, if let's reprint the data frame to see what it looks like right now. We can see again that we have missing values in both the temperature and the humidity column. Say we wanted to replace all of the missing values with the value zero. Then you would be able to write df, fill in a, and then simply pass in a zero. Now when we run this, we can see that all the values that were previously null have been replaced with zero. Another really helpful piece to note here is that you can assign the value that you want to fill for the different columns by passing in a dictionary into the fill in a function where the key is the column name and the value is the value that you want to replace all missing values with. So for example, if we wrote df fill in a and then pass in a dictionary here and we'll write temperature, which is the first column name and say we wanted to give every missing value in this column the value of zero again, we could write zero. And then as our next item, we can write humidity. And now say we wanted to give all of these the value of 99, you can pass in 99. Now when we run this, we can see that all the missing values in the temperature column have been replaced with zeros, while all the missing values in the humidity column have been replaced with 99. Now, it might not be totally useful to simply plug in any random value. A good way to impute your missing values is to use the average of the data set if it's appropriate to do so. So for example, if we wanted to pass in the average value of each of these columns, then we would be able to use this dictionary method again and simply pass this in directly. So I'm gonna copy the code we have here and then instead of passing in a value, what we're going to do is pass in the mean of this. We can either calculate this beforehand, but if it's a changing data set, it's best to pass it in as code. So what we'll do is we'll write df, and then we'll access the temperature column, and then we'll write mean. And similarly here, we'll replace the 99 with df, and then the humidity column dot mean. Now when we run this, we can see that all of the missing values have been here replaced with the mean of the temperature column, and here with the mean of the humidity column. Another really helpful argument with the fill in a function is the ability to use the previous value or the following value in order to fill in your missing data. What I mean by this is let's reprint the data frame as it currently is. If we wanted to use a forward fill, then for example, for this missing data element here, pandas would use this value here to fill in this value. If we wanted to backfill, then it would use the 74.5 to fill in this missing value. This allows you to work with trend data a little bit better than simply imputing the mean, where in some cases it may not be appropriate, as 
temperatures may fluctuate quite greatly throughout the year. But the previous value may be rep more representative. So let's try this out. In order to do this, we're going to write df, fill in a, then we're going to use method equals. This accepts both b fill and f fill for backward and forward fill. So let's try back fill first. We're going to write b fill here. Now when we run this, let's remember that for temperature, index number three was a missing value. When we look down here, we can see that it's actually taken the value from index position four. We can also see that since the values from index positions two through four in the humidity column were missing, it's used the actual value from index position five and filled in all three of these missing values. Now let's try using the forward fill. Again, we'll write df fill in a method equals f fill. Similar to before, it's used an existing value to fill in the missing values. In this case, it's used the previous value to forward fill into the data. Now there may be times when you have long stretches of data missing, similar to what we have in the humidity column. Now let's reprint the original data frame and we can see that we actually have three continuous values missing in the humidity column. There may be times when you don't want to forward fill or backward fill all of these values because they represent too great a range. Pandas allows you to control this by setting a limit to how many values actually get filled in by either forward or backward fill. So let's limit this a little bit. We'll write df fill in a method equals forward fill and then we'll write limit equals and whatever value you pass into here will fill in those number of records before keeping those missing values in there. So say we write two and run this we can see that it's forward filled two of the missing values but left the third one as a missing value. This can be incredibly helpful when you're dealing with data where there are continuous large stretches of data missing. So you've learned quite a bit in this video. You learned how to count the missing values in a particular column in Pandas, and what to do with all of the missing values. As an extra challenge, how would you calculate the mean for the temperature column and backfill up to two different values in the humidity column? If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button. If you haven't yet, click subscribe and click on the little bell icon to be notified of when I release new videos just like this one. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.